Kapasi, 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 kapasi. Here we are again for another prophetic teaching from the Lord. He gives us, thank you Lord, I just see him extending his hands out. He gives us daily bread. Hallelujah, Lord, thank you for fresh revelation, Lord. Lord, thank you that your people will not perish because of lack of knowledge, Lord, that you're stirring up inside them, Lord, that they'd want to study to show themselves approved, Lord, Lord, that they would want to come sit at your feet, Lord, and eat of your word, Lord, that you would refresh them, that you would restore them. Hallelujah. I just see him gathering pieces and putting you back together right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just declare right now every unclean spirit that is trying to hold captive the people of God, I say set them free now in Jesus' name. Loose them now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord say, birds of a feather flock together. Make sure you're watching out who is in your community. Thank you, Lord. Dark and light do not fellowship. We know that because the Bible tells us that. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the people that you're around be a mere image of what you reflect, which should be created in the image of Christ. A shining light. Hallelujah. The invisible representation of God himself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. How shall you run with the horses if you cannot stand or run with the footmen? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just clear out all distractions right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I ask that this word be an encouraging word to your people to let them know the seriousness of what you did on that cross. Thank you, Father. Would you fan into flame the gifts of your people now in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the gifts come with freedom. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The enemy will try to keep us in captivity so we can't release our gifts from the Lord. Only to know that he's a fool. Thank you, Lord. Because we know the gifts and calling come without repentance. However, I do know that when I was still in the dark, I was operating in the spirit of counsel very heavily as I was giving advice to people around me. But it did not mean that that gift was not being polluted or being perverse or that I wasn't um, pulling that from the dark side, right? Hallelujah. Because of the impure spirits that were attached to my soul before I got delivered and set free. Glory be to the King, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is no other God. Place no other God before him. Do not dance between two opinions. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Today is the day to declare you're going to wave your freedom flag. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Because where the spirit is, there is liberty. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Illuminate your word to us, God, meaning you would illuminate Jesus. Thank you, Father. You're so good. So, so good. Thank you, Lord. All fear go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We do not have fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. I just declare a sound mind over your body right now, over the church, over me, the body, and the church. Thank you, Lord. Sound mind. 
Lord, power on high, like in the book of Acts, power on high. We call that from the heavens in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Sound, sound mind. Hallelujah. Let this mind be in you. Hallelujah. That we'd have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Like the book of Corinthians says, I believe in 1 Corinthians. Who would know the thoughts of a man but the spirit of the man? And only the Spirit of God will know the thoughts of God. Hallelujah. Let your church and let your people know the thoughts of you, God. Hallelujah. Will we live our days to think of you, God. Hallelujah. Meditate on your word day and night. Hallelujah. Be bound to you and not bound to sin. Like the book of Romans says, hallelujah. Glory be thy name. Glory be thy name. Glory be thy name. Enlighten the eyes of our heart, Lord. Like Paul says, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for all of your angels encamping around those who revere you. Like your word says, glory to your name, God. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. All right, guys. So let's jump in. I felt like I was straight in the throne room. <laughs> I love when he does that. I can just hear him so clearly and see him so clearly. So let's jump in. So today, when I woke up, the Lord was talking to me heavily. And one of the things he said to me was freedom cost. Freedom cost. Immediately, it reminds me of Luke 14, the cost of a disciple, what it costs to follow Christ, right? The things you have to lay down. For a man who tries to save his life loses his life, but a man who loses his life saves his life. Thank you, Lord, that you'd have to pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow Christ. You know, it says in Luke 14, it says, what person would try to sit down and build a tower and not count the cost, lest he would not finish and people would laugh at him? Or it talks about a king who's going into war that he'd have 10,000 soldiers and the other king against him would have 20,000 soldiers. Wouldn't it be the wise thing to call a peace treaty opposed to going to war knowing that you have 50% less of manpower? Hallelujah. Counting the cost. It cost to be free. You know, I used to think that it cost to be in bondage which it does to a certain level or a certain degree, but it's nowhere near the cost to being free. And so as I begin to dive in deeper with the Holy Spirit about this today and asking him what he truly wanted to release to his people, he said it costs to be free. And the biggest cost is pride and ego and us understanding how desperately we need Jesus Christ, how desperately we need to be saved from this wicked, dark, evil place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. It costs to be free. What are you willing to give up to be free? What are you willing to sacrifice to be free? You know, the Bible tells us that we were not bought by silver and gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I dig into the word today and sit with the Lord as I listen to him. And I can't help but see this pattern that men in the Bible all over were sacrificing their son, their son. First, we start with God who did not spare his own son but sent him to the cross. And just like John 3, 16 says, not to condemn the word, the not to condemn the world, but to save the world, that those who believed in him would not perish but have eternal life. We see this story of Abraham who is asked to give up his son to see if he has faith. Right? Faith to be saved. Faith, faith, faith. We see this story of David who sinned and then went back to the Lord and repented. And the Lord took his son, but was so gracious to give him Solomon, 
right after that. We see this story of Pharaoh where his, his, heart, uh, his heart is hardened. And what happens? The Lord takes his son. It costs to be free. It costs to be free. What are you willing to sacrifice or give up to be free? This is definitely a word for the mature. For those who are seeking deeper in intimacy with the Lord, a deeper level of deliverance, a deeper level of freedom. And those who want to walk in authority, an increased anointing on their life. Knowing that anything that doesn't please God, thank you, Lord, that you would release and that you would give up. Anything that tried to place itself as an idol above God, you would release and give up. Pride and ego is an idol. Think about it. I know in my walk, I idolize what I wanted in my life, who I wanted to be with, where I wanted to go, what career I wanted to be. All of those decisions were based on me leaning on my own understanding and not leaning on Christ and trusting in God with all of my heart. Glory to God, he will straighten out crooked places. Hallelujah. If we humble ourselves and let him know, Lord, forgive me for my pride, forgive me for my ego. It was coming against my freedom. It was coming against my freedom because I thought it was too big of a price to pay to lay down my self-righteousness, to lay down what I thought was right, which leadeth to destruction, to lay down pride, which cometh before a fall. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the blood of Jesus Christ was very expensive. It was not like the animals that was shedded. Their, their blood was shed in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, when they had shed the blood of animals, and it would only cleanse the outer part of the man. The New Testament, Jesus Christ being our high priest, puts us in a place of being cleaned outside and inside and our conscious that we would not be like a Pharisee who cleans the outside of the cup, but is full with pride and greed on the inside of the cup. You know, I heard the Lord say today that my people are re-crucifying me over and over and over and over again. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, I believe it is, that we are re-crucifying Christ. Or that you're trotting on the blood of Christ. Because there is no other sacrifice for sin after the blood of Jesus Christ. What else could you sacrifice? There's nothing else that could overpower, overcome death in the grave. Nothing. Nothing. There would be nothing else you could sacrifice that would give you eternal life, that would bring you into communion with the Father eternally. It cost to be free. It cost God everything. What would make you think that it wouldn't cost you anything? The gift of salvation is free. It's offered to us through repentance and turning away from sin and allowing the Lord to be the owner of our soul, lordship, the authority, which he is. 
because he bought us with a price. We do not belong to our own. Every single member, hand, foot, eye, it's his. It's his. It's his. Would it be used as instruments of righteousness and not instruments of prostitution? It costs to be free. It costs to be free. I'm taking a look at my notes and I think I'll wrap up with this. The Lord had sent me into Jeremiah 13 and it talks about how he weeps in secret because of our pride. I found myself today repenting to the Lord for my pride in my ego. How many times has he sat and weeped in secret because of it? And he says he weeps bitterly that his sheep will be put in captivity. Pride and ego, the very thing that will cost you your freedom, keeps you in captivity, keeps you bound to sin, bound to sin instead of bound in a bond servant to Christ. So today I ask you again, what are you willing to give up and sacrifice for your freedom that is impeding or causing distance or separation between you and the Heavenly Father? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And there is a great distinction coming between those who are really walking with the Lord and those who are not. Those who are, thank you, Lord. <laughs> those who are truly free and those who are truly not. Remember, enslaved people don't free people. It's impossible. Thank you, Lord. So not only does it cost to be free, there's another cost behind it. Other people being free. Other people being free. Listen, when you are a leader in Christ and he has called you to the fivefold ministry, it's going to cost you some things to be free and then free other people. Look at all the great leaders in the Bible. We can start with Moses. It cost him to lead that nation. To set down his pride, to set down his ego, to obey God and listen to his commandments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It cost him. But aren't you a brand snatched out of the fire? Just like he talks in the book of Zechariah, that you'd be able to set the captives free because you used to be a captive that was free. It's easy to be in bondage. I thought it used, I thought it used to be hard. For it is hard to be in bondage. It's hard to have these thoughts. It's hard to be homeless. It's hard to be in addiction. It's hard to struggle. But when you're walking with the Lord, there are going to be some things that come that have to be eliminated, that have to be subtracted. You cannot behave the same way, talk the same way, walk the same way, make decisions the same way. And it's going to come for your ego and your pride because your flesh is always going to rise up against the Lord. Your flesh and your soul wage, they wage war. But who is going to win? Who is going to win? Who will you, who will you bend the knee to? Who will you cave your will to? Even Jesus said in the garden, thank you, Lord. 
Lord, if you can take this cup from me, but nevertheless, your will over mine. Have you gotten to that place yet that you know the cost of being free and you're willing to surrender to that cost so you can walk in that freedom that Jesus Christ paid for on the cross? Passover, my child. Thank you, Lord. Passover. Passover. You were never meant to live in Egypt. Never. The Lord has called you to live a life of complete freedom. I'm just going to wait for a second and see if there's anything else the Lord wants to say. And then I'm going to pray us out. Ah, oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. He reminds me when I was thinking about bondage today, like in the place of bondage, there's no self-discipline. There's no self-responsibility. There's no accountability. You're living wild out there. <laughs> I was living wild in the darkness. Like no bounds. Thank you, Lord. Like no bounds. But when you start following Christ, there is protocol. Thank you, Lord. There is principle. There is boundaries. There is a way that you have to live. Holy, pure, and blameless. And although we cannot do that on our own, because we know in the flesh, no man could do it. That's why Jesus Christ had to come. In the spirit, there is liberty and you can do it. But I'm telling you what I'm learning, the cost of freedom and going deeper with the Lord, even in my fast right now, I am learning that it is a life of responsibility. It is a life of accountability. It is a life of self-discipline. You know, Jesus lived a very fasted life. I just put up a YouTube short about that last night. He reminded me of John 4.32. Where, where they said, Jesus, you need to eat the disciples. He said, I, I eat, of, eat of a meal that you don't know. He eats of the will of the Father. And it costs you your physical, your physical food sometimes to get to that spiritual food. For the will of the Father to be unveiled in your life. He lived a fasted life. And I know for me, like when I, even a couple of months ago, I'm like, Lord, I don't even know if I want this responsibility. It just seems so weighty and so heavy. And I had to bind that spirit of lethargy, bind that spirit of laziness, bind that spirit of idleness and say, Lord, that's a lie. That's a lie from the pit of hell. I do want to walk in what you've called me to walk in, but it's going to take self-discipline, responsibility, accountability, and action action, action, action. Faith is action. Freedom is action. When he went to that cross, it was an action for freedom. You have to act on what he's telling you to do in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. So just right now, Lord, I take authority over that spirit that is keeping them bound in laziness, idleness, apathy, Fear. Hallelujah. And I call forth the power of the Holy Spirit to break that off them now in Jesus' name. That all hindered hindrances coming against their destiny and the plan that you have for their life and the full freedom you want them to walk in, Lord. I'd ask right now that it be canceled and broken in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Open their eyes to the way that the enemy has been using to keep them out of freedom so they can't free other people. Open their eyes, Lord. 
to the way that the enemy will try to fear you with the cost of something to stop you from moving forward and from you buying it, not knowing that Jesus Christ already paid the price. Just believe and receive. Believe and receive. Believe and receive in Jesus' name. Love y'all.